Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the Aircraft Design Workshop in collaboration with the AIAA Design Build Fly Competition. Uh, my name is Akram and I will be the, the hoster for this um, workshop and especially for the first session of this workshop, Aerodynamics of the Aircraft. So let's um, start with the agenda of this first session, Fundamentals of Aircraft and Aerodynamics. So first of all, we're going to talk about the workshop. What is the main um, aim of this workshop? What we're going to discover and what you will um, learn after this workshop. Then we're going to talk about what is CFD in general. Then we're going to dig deeper into CFD modeling. By discovering how the CFD process is done, we're going to talk about the meshing, we're going to talk about turbulence modeling and wall modeling. These are really important things that you have to learn about um, computational fluid dynamics to be able to um, analyze accurate simulations. Then we're going to have a live demonstration where I'm going to show you exactly on a real example of an aircraft how you can simulate it using SimScale. SimScale is an online simulation platform that will allow you to run simulations online without having um, a powerful computer. Then we're going to have a homework. So this homework will be um, optional. So if you want to um, do this workshop, uh, this homework to learn more details and to practice the knowledge that you will acquire during this session. So let's first of all talk about this workshop. So about this workshop. Um, so, what, what is the aim of this workshop? It's to create a precise simulation for your own aircraft design. After this workshop, you will be able to utilize C CFD results to improve the aircraft design. Also, develop and improve your CFD methodology, because we're going to learn some basics, but also some advanced things about simulation. How? This will be done by a live online webinar session and um, corresponding homework that we will discuss this uh, um, by the end of the session. Learning is b based on an original MOCAD model that we're going to provide you with by the end of this session. If you are not an expert with si simulation, it's not a problem. There is no prior knowledge, a software or hardware required to join this workshop. So, homework assignment. Each session includes an optional homework, as mentioned bef um, before. So, a user who complete, users who complete all the workshops or, or all the homes, homework sessions uh, will um, qualify to get a certification from SimScale, which can be added to resume or also to improve your LinkedIn profile. Also, by the end of this session, we're going to have an FAQ session where you can ask your question or um, also you can discuss more deta details and you can ask your questions. So, will this workshop um, will be recorded? Absolutely. So, by the end of this workshop, you're going to receive an email including the recording for this session. Should I already start simulating during the workshop? Don't really. I mean, you have to follow me, so I'm going to show you in details what you, you are supposed to do. Then after this session, you're going to have the time to um, run your simulations where I can get su support. Of course, we do have a dedicated technical support team, and they will be always glad to help you. So you can just drop a message on our live chat, or also you're going to get um, a tutorial of how to perform this simulation. What if I have a trouble setting my simulation? You can reach out directly to me or to our support team, and as mentioned, they will be glad to support you. Okay, so let's talk now more technically, and we'll, let's start with um, what is CFD, which is the first thing that we're going to start with. So, what is CFD? CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. It's a field um, of fluid dynamics. Um, that incorporate numerical analysis to simulate and solve problems involving fluid flows. 
basically can be regarded as a numerical experiment because everything is done on a, uh, using um, computer so there is no physical uh, prototype that you're going to evaluate everything is done on a computer so it, everything it's numerical um, analysis so the numerical calculation are performed on computing machine computers to solve con um, con conservation equation of the fluid dynamics. We're going to talk about this later and you're going to get um, more um, details regarding how we can perform CFD simulations. This provides a fast and cost-effective insights of the flow problem for better performance and design to proceed with the product. So um, the, the the most important thing when you are using CFD is that you will get fast solution because it's on a computer so you don't have to spend any time building the prototype or running the physical test so everything it's on a computer so you can design and you can iterate and you can improve your design on a low cost compared to the experimental approach. Where we can find CFD? CFD can be um, applied in a variety of applications from external aerodynamics to um, other applications like heat transfer also to um, cooling of um, some, some um, centers or heat exchangers also for some application for naval architecture so it's not CFD it's not a field that is only limited for external aerodynamic you can apply it for a variety of application and as mentioned before computational fluid dynamics or CFD it's a virtual experiment okay so let me give you an overview an initial idea about the workflow of um, CFD so first of all to start running a simulation, you will need the CAD model. And what I mean by a CAD model, it's a 3D model that we will use to simulate um, the physics of this model. So we will need the model that um, should like um, check some criteria. So first of all, we have to make sure that it's a clean model that is ready for simulation and it's watertight. Then we're going to prepare a domain. This domain is a discretization of the the field that we want to simulate. So for example, if you are running an experimental test in a wind tunnel, so the wind tunnel, it's a closed domain. And this is exactly what we're going to do with CFD. So we have to discretize our domain of study. The next step will be to discretize this domain of study into small volumes that we call cells. This operation is called the mesh generation. As you can see in this picture, we started with the CAD model, which is the 3D model. Then we discretized this model into small boxes. And these small boxes will give us a control over our domain to, uh, to later analyze our governing equations. So the next step, as mentioned, so we have this set of equations that describe the flow motion in the space and time that we call the Navier-Stokes equations. So these Navier-Stokes equations are the equations that describe the flow behavior of, our, of our, um, an object or in the space um, with time as well. So uh, we call it Navier-Stokes equation. So what we're going to do, we're going to apply this equation on each and every box or cell in this domain to give us a cloud that is covering our um, geometry and this will give us an idea about the, um, the flow around the object. Then we're going to solve these equations, these governing equations, and we will have a set of data um, covering our geometry for all required physics values in the center of each mesh cell. So as you can see in this picture, we're going to have a set of data in the points and these points are the center of cells. And after this, what we're going to do, we're going to in interpolate or um, the values between the points and this will give us a smooth distribution of the physical values that we're going to use to analyze the performance of our product or the behavior of our geometry. Now let's talk in, um, about more advanced topics about CFD and the CFD modeling. So, first of all, um, to describe the um, flow around an object, we will require two major um, quantities. Of course, in this case, we are talking about a low-speed um, phenomena where we require two physical quantities. First of all, is the velocity and the pressure. 
And to do this, we, we need the velocity components because the velocity in the, the space can be um, described in three directions, the x, y, and z, but also the time. And by applying these vectors into three directions, so we will need a u, v, and w. And these are the three components of the velocity um, on function of the space and also the time. So we will end up with a function, um, the velocity in function of space and time. The same thing with the pressure. So the pressure will be a function of the space and time as well. So then what are we going to do? As mentioned before, for, uh, we're going to create um, a special discretization with these small boxes. And based on, uh, by integrating these um, variables over our domain and doing some math, of course, we're not going to go into the details of the, um, the math behind moving from this initial step of the um, the, the parameters to creating this complex uh, these complex equations. So there is a math behind these two steps, but this is the final formats that we're going to get. So based on the conservation law, so we're going to have a conservation of the mass. This means that if we're going to take this um, box over here, we're going to have the flow that is entering from here will equal to the flow that is exiting from other faces. And by doing the math, we're going to have these equations. So the first equation is con called the con conservation of mass. And the second equation is the conservation of momentum. And basically, if we're going to explain it a little bit, so for the first one, it's the rate of change of the mass is equal to the inlet mass flux minus the out outing mass um, from the other phases. And for the conservation of the momentum, so it's the rate of change of the momentum equal um, incoming momentum minus the outcoming momentum. Doing math, some math, we're going to get this partial differential equations, which is really difficult to solve if it's not impossible to solve. Okay, so what we're going to do to solve these equations, as mentioned before, we're going to discretize our domain into small boxes that we call it the mesh. After this, so jumping from this um, geometry and the domain, we're going to end up with these small boxes that will allow us to control the flow over small boxes. And these small boxes will give us an idea about the flow um, behavior by integrating these equations over these boxes. So then we're going to have a cloud that is covering our geometry. The second step would be integration of our cells, as mentioned. And what I mean by this, so here we have the divergence um, theorem, and what we're going to do, we're going to calculate, um, uh, we're going to do the calculation of faces value terms of the cell center values. So we're going to calculate, first of all, the values in the, the, cell, the center of the cells, then we're going to um, interpolate the values in the faces, and this will give us these spatial um, values all over our domain. The next step will be um, to integrate, will be to, uh, so we're going to end up with the partial differential equations. And for this partial differential equation, there is no solution for these equations. And basically, we will need some um, simplification. And we're going to do some integrations, and we're going to end up with a linear um, equation system. But for this linear equation system, as mentioned before, we're going to discretize this huge domain into small boxes and usually we end up with a couple of millions of cells and for the five equations that describe the flow we're going to end up with million if it's not billions of um, lines of linear equations that we can't solve it manually so for this reason we will use a computer to accelerate the process and to make sure that we are solving the equations uh, properly because if we're going to do this as a handmade calculation it will not be possible to calculate it over 100 years so that's why we are using computer to accelerate the process then using an intera um, iterative uh, uh, solving approach so we're going to solve this equation as uh, this linear um, equation system using iterative approach Okay, so now let's, um, let's go in detail. So we have talked about, the, um, in general, what is simulation? What are the major um, things that we will do? So first of all, discretization of the domain, then applying these equations, then um, integrating the equations over this um, domain, then we are going to end up with a system of linear equations, then we're going to solve it using iterative approach.
But now, let's dig deeper into the, um, the each and every step of this um, simulation process. So first of all, meshing. Here we can see an example of this um, UAV model that we're going to talk about it later. And what we can see here, we can see the mo model and we can see these small cells. So if you can zoom in, zoom in a bit here, we can see small cells that are covering our geometry. And these um, cells are the exactly the cells that we're going to use later to solve these equations. Okay, so now let's get an idea about uh, some details that we're going to use to um, make sure that we're going to have a decent mesh that will be that will give us the opportunity to solve this uh, the flow around our object properly. So here we have the background domain as mentioned before because for this equation that um, I showed you before the Navi stocks equations um, our equation that are giving us the the position or the values of velocity pressure if it's compressible flow then it's um, density and other values in space so x y z and t so we have to make sure to get like a, a finite solution so we have to close our domain because if we're not going to close our domain, the solver will give us the values of the, um, the, per, the physical values that we are looking for everywhere. And it's an inf infinite um, domain. So we have to make sure that we have closed domain to make sure that um, our solver will find the final solution. So this is exactly what we did here. We put this model in the middle and we created this domain that is surrounding our geometry. But we have to make sure that this domain is not small, really small and close to the body. Otherwise, we're going to have an interaction between our geometry and the, the domain. And this will create some um, errors later for the results that you're going to get. So we have to make sure that the domain is large enough, but it's not extremely large. So you're going to solve it with your computer. But um, thanks to SimScale, now you will be able to get access to powerful um, machines on a cloud where you can run it with a simple laptop or a simple tool or hardware just with an internet connection. The next step will be, so here we have two choices. So the first one is to create a mesh outside the domain or we can create the mesh inside the domain. This is a tricky point, to be honest, because if we're going to if we're going to create the the mesh inside the domain, as you can see here, so uh, you can see that um, we're going to solve what we have inside our geometry, which is wrong, because inside the geometry it's closed domain, and we are not interested about what we have inside the domain. The other option will be to create a mesh outside, and this is what we are looking for, how to define this. It's just using this material point that we're going to talk about it later in our um, live um, demo um, on this model. So we have this point that will describe which region will be meshed and which region will be um, keep it as an empty field. So we have to make sure that our point, material point, it's outside our geometry, otherwise we're going to mesh what we have inside. Okay, then after doing this, we're going to go to the surface refinement. The surface refinement, it's, uh, it's a feature that will allow us to create a smooth uh, mesh all over our geometry. Because if we're going to use a coarse mesh, then we're going to, as you can see here, you can see that there is a difference between this cell size, cell size and this one over here. And this is controlled using the, the surface refinement. Because if we're not going to use the surface refinement, then we're going to end up with a coarse mesh over our geometry. And probably this will not really represent the features um, of the geometry, like small features in the geometry. And probably this will not give us the right curves of the geometry. And this, of course, will have an huge impact on the aerodynamic performance because um, uh, I guess you have an idea about the airfoil and if you're not going to get the right curvature of the airfoil and the leading edge then we're going to end up with some issues of the um, of the performance of the airfoil some flow rotation and so on and this will create problems for the accuracy okay then of course, we're going to um, create um, a fine mesh close to the body. But another thing, because for external aerodynamics, it's not only about the surface of the object, 
but also it's the flow around the object. And for this reason, we are using the region refinement. And the region refinement is special refinement that will allows us to refine the flow around our geometry. So it's not only on our geometry, but around our geometry. And this is what we call the region refinement. We're going to talk about all these details later in the live demo, and you will understand these things better later. Okay, then layer um, refinement, or what we call layer inflation. It's really important, and we we're going to have a dedicated um, part of this um, presentation about the boundary layer. Because for external aerodynamics, most of the forces are created from two, um, I mean, the drag and the lift forces are created from two major forces. It's the pressure force and the viscous forces. Basically, the pressure force is the force created from the delta P, or the pressure difference from the, the stagnation pressure and the wick or the low pressure region behind our geometry or our object. And the other force is the viscous force that is created from the, the friction between the fluid and um, the body due to the viscosity effect. We're going to talk about all these things in a few seconds. So that's why we need special kind of mesh refinements close to our geometry to make sure that we're going to have the right re um, resolution or the right results in terms of viscosity because it's really important effect and the viscosity will have a direct impact on the lift and the drag due to the, um, the flow separation effect. Now let's talk about the physics. That was an overview about the mesh. So as mentioned, the workflow of the simulation. So first of all, you need the CAD model, then you have to create the mesh. We have talked about what is the mesh, how you can mesh a geometry, what are the features that you can use to create a good mesh. But now let's talk about physics, which is a really important thing because this is, in the end, this is what we are interested about. We are not interested about the mesh, but the mesh is just a step to reach to the final results. Okay, so let's assume here we have this um, domain, which is our virtual wind tunnel. So for this virtual wind tunnel, as mentioned before, we're going to discretize our fl fluid domain into a discretized domain. And for this domain, as you can see here, here in the middle we have the geometry of our UAV, or our, sorry, of um, our aircraft. And basically here we have the domain, and we have an inlet and an outlet. And this will allow us to, to run a flow from this side. And then we're going to have the flow exit from this side because we have to make sure that it's an open field. Otherwise, we're going to have the flow stuck. And then this will not converge the solution. Of course, we are using other boundary condition, but I don't want to talk about this later. It's better to see this in um, the live demo presentation. OK, now let's talk about really important thing and probably you have heard about it before. If you are in the engineering field, you, you're going to hear about it a lot. So what is turbulence? And so turbulence, it's a just a chaotic change, um, change of the field values in the space and time. What I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, it's we have a pressure and we have velocity. What will happen for this two components, probably density. These values will change in the space. Um, so if we're going to calculate in one value, in one point, the value of pressure over time, we're going to see that this, um, these values will change in function of time. And this is what we call turbulence. So it's a chaotic change um, of the field values in the space and time. Here we have this example to get an idea about what is turbulence. So here we have two flow rate, three flow rates. And we can see when we increase the flow rate, what we are doing, we are increasing the turbulence. And I'm going to explain this in a few seconds. Another concept, which is the viscosity. As mentioned before, viscosity is um, the friction between the two, a bit between the layers of the fluid. And this is due to the, the movement of particles of fluid from a layer to another. And when they move, they transport some um, uh, momentum. And this momentum will create what we call the viscosity. And here we have two, two concepts that we are going to face a lot in CFD or fluid mechanics in general. So turbulence and viscosity. I know that for these things are fundamental things, but you have to understand these things to move to CFD. But I know that you are mainly interested about how to set up simulation, and we're going to talk about this later in the live demonstration. So 
we do have these two concepts. And from these two concepts, we're going to end up with this really important thing that you have to understand, which is the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number, it's just the ratio between inertial forces, which is the turbulence forces, and the viscous forces, which is the viscosity. So if you have a high number, Reynolds number, this means we have higher inertial forces than viscous forces, and then we're going to have more chaotic flow. If we have um, smaller or, um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, smaller Reynolds number, then we have more domination of the viscous forces. Okay, now let's talk more details about what is turbulence. Turbulence, it's a chaotic changement of the fluid, as mentioned before. But let's explain it in more details using this graph. So, as mentioned, if we're going to take a point in the space and we're going to plot the, um, the velocity U or maybe pressure over time, we're going to end up with such a curve that is not stable. I mean, it's changing and there is this peaks of the, um, the values and it's changing. So, it's not stable. So, basically, it will be impossible to solve this kind of um, solution, uh, to get this kind of solutions using a computer because it's changing and this will require a lot of computation. So what we do, we take the average of this um, graph and then we're going to end up with two values. So the main value, which is u, equal to the average value plus a fluctuation value or fluctuating value. And this, the combination will give us the average or the, um, the main value of the the physical um, quantity, in this case we are talking about velocity. So U, UT, it's the oscillation occurring at different time and length scales and that's why it's really difficult to uh, predict it. So very high calculation effort to solve all the scale and this is what we call DNS or direct numerical simulation. We're not going to go to these things because these are more advanced things. Let's focus more about how we can solve this problem using simulation. So we're not going to talk about this. We're going to completely um, disregard this part and we're going to focus on the U bar. So the U bar or the, here it's the U um, effective. So it's the momentum equation. So we're going to get it from the momentum equation and this will equal to the physical viscosity, the viscosity that we know, which is the friction between the layers of the fluid plus um, a, viscous, um, a, a turbulent viscosity. And for this turbulent viscosity, we're going to use an additional turbulence models to um, model this value. So, there is, so turbulence vis, turbulent viscosity doesn't exist in reality. So we're going to use a turbulence model to model it. So there is no exact value for it. So, how we can cal so now we can calculate the turbulence based on additional transport properties um, instead of solving all the time and length scales. So, we're going to model it instead of solving these um, values. So, um, now let's talk about another thing. So, let's talk about the turbulence dissipation and the break the breakup of the, the turbulence. So, if we take this example from here, we're going to start from T0. T0 it's the start. So if we're going to assume that we're going to have this large turbulence scale, as you can see here, turbulence at um, I mean, eddy scale, we can see that the, it's really large. I mean, the scale of the turbulence is really large. And it's breaking down step by step when the time is, um, uh, is ex uh, I mean, is moving. So this will create a breakup in the turbulence and we're going to end up with small eddies. So um, here, here also another important thing that we're going to talk about it. Uh, for this turbulence, we're going to talk about two major uh, models that we're going to use later for the simulation. So it's two equation model. So we're going to use two things to model the turbulence. First of all, it's the energy in the turbulence. And secondly, it's the dissipation rate. The dissipation rate, it's exactly what I was talking about before from the, the left side. It's this breakup of the turbulence size into small eddies, and this is what we call the dissipation. There is different models to model turbulence, and one of the most famous turbulence um, used in different applications is the K omega SST. There is a K omega, a K epsilon that is um, spallard almaras, and there is other models to, to model this um, the how is called it the the turbulent viscosity so let's accelerate it a bit and now we're going to talk about an important thing that i mentioned before which is the flow close to the 
uh, to the walls. And this flow, it's really important to make sure that you're, you're going to have the right um, solution or the right values, especially for you. Most of you, I believe, you are in the field of aeronautical engineering and uh, you are designing aircrafts. And it's really important to understand this concept because this concept will give you the possibility to create accurate results, but also this concept will give you the possibility to improve the performance your, your, of your aircrafts even at high angle of attack. So you will not, so you will um, reduce or you will um, improve the high angle of attack without any flow separation. So it's what we call the wall modeling. The wall modeling it's usually to model the boundary layer, the flow close to the um, the wall. So. To explain this, let me uh, illustrate it here. So here with this um, dark gray, we have a wall. A wall can be um, a flat surface, can be a surface of a wing, any kind of surface, like um, physical surface. And then from this, um, from the top here, we have the fluid. And we mentioned that there is a friction between the fluid and the solid. And this is exactly what we're looking at here. Because of this friction, then this, if we're gonna zoom closer to this surface here, this is an airfoil from the side, we're going to see this flow gradient over here. And this flow gradient is because of the, um, because of the, the viscosity effect or the friction effect between the wall and the, sur uh, between the surface of the, uh, the geometry and the fluid. And we need a special kind of modeling or mesh generation close to this region to make sure that we have the right um, resolution of this of this region that we call the boundary layer. So this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a small mesh close to this region to make sure that we are resolving this um, region properly. And this is really important, especially for external aerodynamics. I, 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 I'm, I can suggest that this is really important for any kind of simulations or any kind of applications. But for external aerodynamics, boundary layer, it's one of the most important uh, concepts that you have to focus on. Okay, so um, this this mesh should be flat cells which resolve um, directionally change of the velocity. Um, so we're going to talk about all these things later, and I'm going to show you in the the, um, the live demo how to do this. Okay, so we were talking about this wall function. Let me just go back for a second and to explain you to explain you something. So when we jump back to the, the next slide, you will understand what I'm talking about. So when we mention the first cell, when we talk about the first cell, the first cell is this cell, the one the closest to the, um, the surface of the body. And this first cell have like huge um, influence on the results later because this first cell will have a direct impact on the viscous forces calculated by the software. Okay, so here we're going to talk about the wall, um, the law of wall. So the law of wall, it's a spe specific way to describe the velocity close to the wall. And basically, if we're going to use the, the, um, the no wall approach, uh, we're going to talk about it later. This will be ex extremely um, time expensive because you're going to run a simulation with more cells and also the solver will find some issues sometimes to resolve the right profile of the boundary layer. But with this low wall, um, low of wall, you will be able to model it. So we're not going to exactly solve it. How you're going to do this? By putting the first cell close to the wall, but it will not be um, really close, but there is another parameter that we're going to talk about it here, which is the Y plus. The Y plus, it's a dimensionless um, software, uh, sorry, dimensionless number that is used to describe the um, which region in the boundary layer we are solving. And this value or the Y plus or this number um, is related directly to three things. So, um, I mean, one thing is constant, which is the density, but also sorry, the viscosity, but also to two other things. It's the, the velocity and also um, to the first, to the height of the first layer or the first cell close to the wall. Now we're going to talk about this um, modeling. So 
if we're going to go deeper in the boundary layer, we're going to have three layers close to the boundary layer. So first of all, which is the viscous sublayer. For this layer, we're going to have a domination of the, the viscous effect. For the second layer, I'm, I'm talking about this graph from here. So here we are plotting the, uh, the, um, the dimensionless uh, velocity and the dimensionless um, wall distance from this side. So if you have a, um, a y plus, which is this dimensionless um, number that I was talking bef uh, about it before, so if you have it between 0 uh, usually to, um, I'm going to say to 10, so in this region, you're, you're solving the viscous sublayer. And if you're, if you're solving this layer, to, sometimes the solver can find some issues in this layer to get a proper solution. And also, this can take some time to get the final solution. Then we're going to have a buffer layer. It depends, I mean, on the software. But also, these, I mean, what I'm talking about here, it's just a um, rule of thumb. So um, between one, but between 30, between, um, I'm going to say between 10 or between 0 to 1, it's a viscous sublayer. Then from um, 1 to, um, to 30, this is what we call the buffer layer, where we have a mix between, uh, between the viscosity and the, the um, how it's called, the turbulence. But if we go um, more than 30, the y plus equal 30, then we are talking about the, um, the outer layer, or the, sorry, the inner layer. And in this region, it's where we need our mesh to be, um, to be created to make sure that we're going to have a proper wall treatment. Okay, so this is, uh, this is exactly what I was talking about. So if you are um, interested to use the wall function, which is really important, so this will give you a fast solution, but decent solution. It's not the 100% accurate, but it's really decent for external aerodynamic application. So we have to make sure that your Y plus is between 30 to 300, and this will be controlled with velocity. The velocity, we can't control it, but we can control the height of the first cell. If you want to go without a wall function, where you will get highly um, accurate results, but this can be tricky a little bit. If you can't, if you if you are not really an expert in the field, then you have to go with a y plus of one. But this will create some issues if you don't have the right experience or the right skills to do it. Okay, so um, CFD process in SimScale. I was talking a lot about equations, about theories, about how you model flow, but now let's go more into practice and more into um, practical things and more of how you use the tool instead of the, the, the class that I was um, doing before. So now we're going to talk about the CFD process using SimScale. SimScale, it's a cloud tool and the workflow, it's the same as um, any tool in the CAE. Um, uh, in the CFD uh, market, but the, the thing that differentiates SimScale because it's a cloud tool, so you will be able to run the simulations without the need of any powerful computer because you're going to run your simulations on cloud, so all what you need, it's a simple hardware, it can be a laptop or a tablet or even a smartphone with an internet connection. So the first step would be the pre-processing. So for the pre-processing, usually this step is done in the CAD software where you clean the model. So first of all, you create the model, then you clean it. The second step will be the mesh. And the mesh will be um, done on SimScale. I'm going to show you this in the demo presentation. And then you're going to set up the simulation, uh, all the boundary condition, what you're looking for as a result and so on. Then the last step will be the post-processing where you're going to analyze the results that you got from this simulation, and which is the most important thing, because you're going to understand the performance of your product or the performance of your design um, in the early stages without um, building in a prototype. So this will help you to accelerate the, uh, the design and uh, the, the design process, but also get an efficient um, workflow. <coughs> Sorry. OK. Now is the time to jump to the, um, the live demonstration. So basically, I have um, some questions here. I prefer to keep it later um, by the end of the presentation, where we're going to have um, a, a quick Q&A &A session where you can ask your questions. I, I see your questions over here, but I promise if I will not have enough time, I promise you that I'm going to answer your questions one by one by email. Okay. So 
let me just sorry let me just jump to um, the SimScale platform and show you exactly how to set up this kind of simulations and we have a real example of UAB I'm gonna say it's a generic model but um, this the same process that I'm gonna show you you can use it in your design so we don't have to um, follow another process you can use the same process the same steps the same setup of course you can tune it a little bit f uh, to um, suit your requirements but this is exactly the workflow that we're going to go through. So to get access to the SimScale platform, we are providing a free version and it's more for hobbyists. And also we are using, we are, we are providing an academic plan that, um, that can help you to, um, to analyze your project um, privately because for this free plan that I'm going to show you now and how you can subscribe and so on, this, all the projects will be public. Of course, I forget to mention something. My colleague Anna, she's our academic uh, program manager. She will be, um, I mean, you can approach her if you are interested about our, our academic um, plan and she will be glad to help you to get access to our um, academic plan subscription. So how to get, first of all, access to our community plan. So we go to our website, simscale.com. After you go to simscale.com, so sorry, I really apologize for this. Okay, so here you, ha you have the possibility to directly start uh, creating an account. So you, all what you have to do, you click here, start simulating in a minute. You're going to just enter your information, email, just to get the login, the password, and so on. And the process is straightforward. So we're going to create an account. You're going to get the login information. Then what you have to do, you just go here. Of course, I'm logging in, so I'm going to log out. So you're going to enter, enter your um, information, so your name and also your password. And you are ready to go to simulate. So the first, so first of all, we do have a community, we do have public projects. So what you have to do, just go to the dashboard, and here in the dashboard, you're gonna have a variety of. Uh, I mean, here are the projects that you're working on. I'm gonna give you just a quick tour to give you an idea about what you can do with SimScale. So here we have this public project. This public project, it's tons of projects, thousands and thousands of projects from different applications, from CFD, FEA, other applications that I want to. I don't want to talk about it now. So what you have, what you can do, you can go to this project, you can view it, but you also you can copy it and you can use it as a template for your projects. So even if you are not an expert in CFD, you you still um, can use simulations and um, use this ready setups from our public projects. Also here there is a forum where you can interact with our um, community. You can ask questions, you can post, you can um, interact with our um, community over here. So let's not go in details with these things, but also there is help and so on. So let's focus on our um, main interest thing, which is um, this presentation. So I'm going to show you step by step from the first step of importing the model through uh, the mesh generation steps, but also how to uh, do the simulation setup and the post processing. So here, um, when you create the account, you will be able to and create a new project so then when you create a new project you can just open the project you go into the project and now I'm going to show you how to do these steps so this is the interface of SimScale so it's an interactive interface it's everything is on the browser so we don't have to do any local installation so it's just a web browser and you are ready to go with um, the simulation so first of all you're going to import your geometry. As mentioned before, this is the first step that we have to do. So to import the geometry, so you just right click on geometries over here, then you can upload a geometry. And when you click here, you're just going to name your geometry. I'm going to do a test. And you're going to select the format. I believe that most of you, you are using a CAD software, and you know there is a variety of CAD softwares. So we support a variety of formats, from native to generic formats. For example, Step, IGES, which is um, which are the most important, the most common um, formats in the CAD softwares, but also some native formats like SolidWorks, Rhino, Autodesk. And if you are using another tool, you can just export your model directly using one of the other formats, tab or iGES or even STL as tessellation and you're ready to go. 
So then what you can do, you can drag, drag and drop your geometry over here, or you can open the file using, um, I, I mean, you can find the file and you can op open it from here. Straightforward process. As soon as you import the, pro the model, you have the model over here. As you can see, you can move it, you can look at it, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, all the functionalities of viewing. You can use this um, box from here to interact with the model. You can have uh, specific um, positions and views. But now let's talk to the mesh. So um, as you can see here in this um, upper left side, so we have the mesh generator, we have the simulation designer, and we have the pass processor. As mentioned before, these are the most uh, uh, the important steps that you have to go through to get the final result. We're going to talk now about the mesh generation. The mesh generation, it's uh, I mean um, down here we have so here we have the geometries, then we have the meshes. So to create a mesh, what you have to do, you just right click over here and you create a new mesh. But also if you are using another software to create the mesh, you can upload your own um, meshes. But I prefer to talk about how you can generate the mesh using the same scale. So you just right click here, then create a new mesh. When you click here, you're going to just select the geometry that you did before and you're going to name it. I'm going to keep my name as test. Just to give you an example, because I have really example to show you. Then what you have to do, what you are supposed to do, you right click, add a mesh operation. And for this mesh operation, we do have a different algorithms, from um, automatic algorithms to um, manual. Of course, the automatic ones will give you fast solution, a fast mesh, but it's not really... Um, uh, I mean, this will not give you a lot of control, and maybe the software will give you a mesh that, is, that you are not really looking for. If you are looking for more detailed mesh, then there is another option, which is the hex dominant parametric um, mesh. Also, we have an external aerodynamic, and I believe this will be really helpful for um, you guys for your, this application of external aerodynamics. And you can just click here, and you can select the coarseness of your mesh from fine coarse, as mentioned before. You have to go for a finer mesh, but make sure that you're not go, going so crazy. So you make sure that the uh, the tool or sorry, the computer can solve your um, can solve your solution. Okay. So, um, but for this example that I want to show you, I'm not going to go to the um, the automatic approach, but more in, into manual approach. I have a mesh that is already ready here, and I'm going to take you through this mesh setup um, to not um, lose time and to save some time. Okay, so um, as mentioned before, you're going to create the mesh, and then you're going to right-click on operation. You're going to create new operation. Then under operation, we're going to do some step, some um, things. So I'm just going to turn. Okay. So we assume that we don't have a mesh. So here you can see that we have this domain. And this domain, it's the domain that we were talking about before. Give me just a second to load the results. And as you can see here, if I'm going to hide these faces, you can see that we have our geometry of the drone over here. So here, um, it's our um, aircraft geometry. And we are discretizing the domain or the, the space into this box. As mentioned before, we have to make sure that this box is large enough to avoid any interaction between the box and uh, the geometry. Otherwise, we're going to create some blockage um, effect, and this will influence your results. Probably you have not said something, that we are using just the half of geometry. I'm going to zoom in a little, little bit, and you will see. And maybe you will ask why you are using the half of the geometry. Basically because this is a symmetric problem where we are um, simulating just different angle of attacks. Of course, if you are using, if you are simulating maybe um, yaw or roll, then it's another thing. But for symmetric problems, we can just take the half of the geometry, then we can mirror the, the solution, and we can have the full solution. I'm going to also show you this in the past process and how you're going to do it. So as mentioned before, you're going to create this domain over here that is um, covering your geometry. Then the next point, I, I hope you, um, you remember what I was talking about before, this material point, that you have to make sure that you're putting it outside your geometry, otherwise you're going to mesh what you have inside your geometry. So um, make sure that this point, the blue point over here, it's between your geometry and the box. So this will uh, 
tell the software to mesh what you have between the box and the geometry. If I'm going to put my point inside the geometry, I'm going to tell the software to mesh what I have inside the geometry. And this is wrong. This is not what we are looking for for this example. Okay. The same thing with other um, boxes. Guys, we are creating some boxes for mesh, uh, for um, for the, the regional refinement, as mentioned before, we're not only interested about the flow over the surfaces, but also we are interested about the flow um, around the object or around our geometry. And that's why we're creating these boxes. For these boxes, we're going to assign different refinement or um, different mesh size to make sure that we are resolving the flow around our object properly and we are getting decent results or um, of the flow features around our object. Of course, we are using different uh, boxes over here, as you can see. So to enter this box value, so we you do have the min, max um, dimensions of the, the box, and you can just tune it and modify it. Also, after this, you're going to get uh, you're going to get a tutorial where you will get all this information step by step in a written form. Okay, so here we have also the wing refinement, all this thing, all this refinement, as you can see here, we have these small boxes, I'm going to maybe hide the first one so you can see what I'm talking about, so as you can see, we're creating these small boxes to create a different refinements level to make sure that we are getting the right resolution of the flow, um, I mean, to resolve the flow features around our geometry. To create different refinements. I already explained before how to what kind of refinements um, you will need to do this. You have this um, option here or this feature mesh refinements and to create new mesh refinements you just right click at the mesh refinement and then you can select different mesh refinements which you have as uh, as presented before um, regional refinement, surface refinement, um, bundle layer refinement, and in this example, we're going to use three major um, refinements, the region, the layers, and the surfaces. And to do this, you just select one of the refinement um, types, maybe surface refinement, then what you are supposed to do, you just um, write, uh, maybe what I can do so I can show you this better, I can duplicate this mesh and I can edit it a bit, so I will be, so I'm going to um, delete Give me a second. So I'm going to delete this mesh and I'm going to um, work on it as I am uh, setting up the this mesh from scratch. Perfect. So here we have the geometry. As you can see, um, it was a full model. Then we used just the half to um, reduce the computation. So we're going to use just the half to reduce the computation. Otherwise, we're going to spend twice time, two times um, the computation uh, time or that we're going to spend it on the full model. And here we can see, uh, as mentioned, so we're going to create a new mesh refinement and maybe we can call it as surface uh, refinement for wings. Okay, because I didn't select anything. And now I want these faces because, you know, uh, wings are really important parameters. We have to make sure that we have um, small, uh, I mean, um, fine ref mesh over here. So I'm going to select here, and here I'm going to select this mesh refinement level, maybe at four, and maybe five. It's just to demonstrate um, how the process. Of course, for this mesh refinement, this is uh, the level of refinement um, r um, relative to the, um, the base size mesh. I think I, I, I skipped one step which is really important, it's, it's over here. Okay, so let me go back here. So we have, the, we can see this number of cells in the XYZ direction. If you remember, we created this background mesh. And then what, what we're going to do, we're going to split this um, domain into small cells in the XYZ direction to create a base um, size mesh or the background mesh. And this background mesh will be the the reference for our refinements. So when we say refinement level one, it will be the base size mesh divided by two, then you're going to get the base size, uh, the mesh number two, or the, the refinement number two. Maybe the best option to do this. I'm going to jump to the, to draw something for you guys, so um, I can explain this um, in more details. Okay, so um, just quickly, 
I'm going to draw something here to make it um, clear for you what I'm talking about. So we assume that this is our geometry. This is our aircraft. It's just a generic form. I just want to give you an example. So what we're going to do, we're going to create this box around our geometry. So what we're going to do, we're going to split this geometry or this box into um, small boxes in the X. So we're going to give the values of the, the, the boxes in the X and also in the Y. So I'm just going to make it fast just to give you an idea. Then what we're going to do, we're going to create these cells over here. Okay, so this cell size, it's the base size mesh. And then when you go to refinement, for example, you want to get smaller cells over our geometry. If this one, we're going to consider it as level one, then level two will be uh, zero. Sorry, this will be level zero. Then if we're going to select level one, this cell will be split into two parts. And we're going to consider this as level one. Level 2 will be level 1 divided by 2. And this will create a finer and finer and finer mesh to get more um, accurate representation of the geometry. That was just a quick uh, explanation to give you an idea about what I'm talking about here. As soon as you create this um, refinements, then here in the operation, you do have a lot of parameters. Um, if you don't really know what are what is the function of each parameter please do not change anything here keep the the default values or you can um, read about it or you can just when you click here you can get this help with um, description but if you really don't know what is the the effect of changing these parameters please avoid changing anything here okay so we have to um, get faster bits now so we're gonna so as soon as you create this mesh or the setup of the mesh then what you have to do you just select the number of cores the number of cores as you know simscale is a cloud tool so you will be able to uh, to um, use different parallel uh, simulation um, calculation and we have the possibility to run from one core to up to 32 cores you can select 32 core to accelerate the process of the computation um, to reduce the computation time then as soon as you do this you just right click here on save then you click on start of course I mean the mesh will, will fail because I mean I did some modification probably but as soon as you click on start the simulation will start and now you can close your computer you can do your uh, something else homework or something else and the solver on the computer is um, calculating your uh, solution on the cloud okay so let's just stop it because we don't need it but here you got already an idea about the mesh how the mesh looks like I'm just gonna give you another view here this is the final solution of the mesh. I'm going to hide these faces, and if I'm going to close, get closer here, here you can see the mesh and the cells that I was talking about and all the details of the geometry. If I'm going to zoom in, zoom in um, deeper, we can see the layers that I was talking about. You can see that this mesh is completely different from this mesh because this will try to solve the boundary layer um, flow. Let's um, jump to... The second part, as soon as you finish the mesh, will be the simulation designer. The simulation designer is where you set up your simulation. Of course, for this case, we are, just, we are doing two different simulations, the three degrees and also the 20 degrees, to give you an idea about the effect and how you can use simulation or computational fluid dynamics to predict the performance of your design in the early stage without doing any physical prototype or running the um, your aircraft directly for a flight and then you will crash and you will um, you, you you will find problems and you can't really pr um, understand what is going on so here with simulation you will be able to understand what is happening before what is going to happen before um, building anything so as soon as you um, create the mesh then you can just right click here create a new simulation the same process simscale as mentioned before, it's not only a computational fluid dynamics tool. It's um, a CAE, Computer Edit Engineering Platform, that is combining different disciplines from computational fluid dynamics to structural mechanics to thermal analysis and also another application, which is particle simulation. Let's not talk about the other things. Let's focus more about our application, which is fluid um, dynamics. And because we are running... Um, low speed analysis so it will be incompressible flow so I'm gonna right click here 
then I'm going to create. So when I create this, um, I will select, first of all, my mesh that I created previously. I'm going to save. Then I'm going to select the material. Of course, um, the material in this case it will be air because it's an external aerodynamic case. So to do this, you just click on import from material library. And then you're going to select the, the air. Of course, you do have other kind of fluids. But in this case, let's focus more on air then you're going to select your domain. So this domain will be um, filled with air. So I'm going to click on save and then you're going to initialize. I mean, you can initialize your domain here, but um, most importantly, it's the, the boundary condition. So for the boundary condition, the, the condition that the solver will take to solve this equation that I discussed before, the Navier Stokes equations. So we're just going to add boundary condition over here and then you're going to select your boundary condition type and here I'm just going to give you an example but later I'm going to jump back to one of the, the already set it up simulations um, so how to do this for example we're going to start with velocity inlet I'm going to just select from here I'm going to select this face then this face will be um, assigned to this boundary condition then you're going to select the velocity the velocity it depends on how what what is the velocity that you want to evaluate but I'm just going to give an, um, a rough number I don't know exactly what is the value that you want to evaluate but this value should be in the in the z minus it depends on your model in this model it's z minus but it can be in the y minus x or something else Okay, so um, you're going to just here in this case, I'm going to put it as minus maybe 15 or another value, depends on what you're looking for exactly, because the flow is going to came from this direction to the other direction. Of course, there is different kind of boundary condition from symmetry, outlet, inlet, and so on. So um, I'm going to skip this point. I'm going to go back to one of the, the simulation setup that are, have already been created. So here we have the the geometry um, of the UAV, we're going to assign it as a wall because it's a rigid body, so it will be a, body, uh, a wall. Then um, here from the front, we're going to have the inlet. Here we are assigning 20, 20 um, meter per second. Then we're going to have a symmetry, this wall from here, because as mentioned before, we are using just the half of the geometry. So we have to symmetry everything to the other side. So we're going to so we're going to assign this wall, the um, the cut in the cut wall as um, a symmetry plan. So we will be able to to mirror everything over this wall um, to get the full solution later. Of course, as mentioned. We can't have an inlet without an outlet. The other side will be an outlet from here. And this walls, the rest of the walls, we are assigned as um, walls. I mean, you can just give it a wall as closed domain. OK, so then the next step will be the numerics. Numerics, it's a really complex place. This, this is where we assign the approach of um, integrating the uh, integrating this equation partial equation and move it to uh, transfer it to um, linear uh, equation system but also how you're gonna do the interpolation I mean there is a lot of math behind this there is a lot of uh, uh, things behind this um, parameters I'm not gonna go deeper into these things but what I suggest of course after this uh, webinar or session you're gonna have um, a tutorial so it will show you exactly what you have to do but I suggest if you don't know what is it read about it or keep it by default because this was based on the best practice um, values Okay, then we're going to have simulation control, simulation control, we're going to select the number of iteration and we're going to select the number of cores that we're going to run, use to run. As, as the uh, mentioned, you're going to get a tutorial, we're going to show you step by step what you are supposed to do. So we don't have to go all over these uh, things now, but of course later when you are by yourself, you can just read about it and understand the, um, the effect of each thing, everything here, and this will give you better understanding about what I'm talking about now. Um, then we're going to have a result control for this result control to give us an idea about the CL and the CD, which is the most important thing for you guys, which is the drag coefficient and the lift coefficient. Um, to do this, it's just, I'm going to illustrate this because it's really important for you. So you're going to click on add the force, um, forces and momentum, moment, sorry. And then we're going to um, select, I mean, of course, if you, if you have, if you want to get the moment, so you need a point um, or the center of gravity of the object, of course, you, get, you have to calculate it and you have to assign it over here. Then you're going to select the faces 
um, give me a second, so you, you have to select the faces that you want to calculate these forces and in this case, for example, if you want to calculate the forces on the wing, so you just have to click on the wing. If you want to select the whole um, air, aircraft body, so you have to select all the aircraft body. Okay, so great. The next step will be the run simulation. As soon as as soon as you finish the simulation setup, I try to make it fast, so I don't want to go into the details, but just to give you a general overview about the simulation setup, then you can uh, just right click here and um, create a new run. Of course, because I did some, I edited some stuff, so that's why the simulation will not run. Um, and then you just click start, the simulation will start. Okay, I'm not going to save it. Okay, anyway, um, that's it for the simulation. The simulation can take some time to finish. Of course, you have to do some calculation, and um, this may take depends on the size of the simulation. If it's steady, transient, can vary from, from one minute to days to weeks. So. You have to, um, I mean, to give the, the computer the time to calculate all these equations that um, have been created um, previously. Of course, guys, uh, I, we are a little bit running of out of time, so I, I will try to make it um, clear, but also uh, I can see a lot of questions. Maybe we, we will probably skip this um, Q&A session, but I promise you guys, just drop your questions. I promise you to come back to you as soon as possible via email, and um, I will do my best to answer your questions. Okay, so the simulation will um, the simulation is running now, and when the simulation is running, you're going to get this um, conversions plot, and this conversions plot will give you an idea about the. Um, of course, we are running iterative uh, simulation, so this is the residual. This is the gap between each um, and each um, iteration and the previous one, and more. Um, I mean. Low, if we have a less gap between the two um, iterations, this we, we will. Um, this means we are converging the simulation. Okay, so as soon as the simulation finishes, in this example, it's 195 minutes to finish the full simulation. Of course, because of the size of the simulation and so on, then the last step would be the pass processing. I'm gonna try to make it fast, but also I'm gonna jump to show you some results and discuss some um, some results uh, that we have extracted from this simulation. So as soon as you finish, you just click on Pass Processor, and then you're gonna you're gonna have this um, I mean this tab over here where it says like the match the simulation that you have created, but also the simulation fields. And what you're gonna do, you click on the simulation fields, and here this may take a few minutes and all maybe some a few seconds or a few minutes depends on the size of your match the size of your simulation the kind of simulation you have created because um, here what we are doing we are um, uploading the whole um, the results and these results can vary from one gig of uh, memory or up to 30 um, gigabyte of memory so we have to be patient a little bit here to um, get the results okay so maybe we can uh, just load this um, view viewer state this uh, as mentioned uh, depends on the size of the simulation but also the internet connection because you are using a cloud tool so um, probably this may take some time if you don't have a fast internet connection but just be patient a bit and this will um, load okay as you can see here awesome so the results are um, loaded over here just a few seconds. Okay, awesome. So um, here, what we are looking. At, so what I want to show you. I want to show you two things. So first of all, um, it's how you analyze the, your the performance of your design. So when you do the simulation and all this physics uh, that we were talking about, the most important thing I believe is to analyze the, prefer the design and see where you can improve your design. If you have um, a failure, what, what is the thing that causing this problem, how you're going to solve it, and all these things can be done only you, by visualizing these results that you got from this simulation. So here, um, I'm, I'm so sorry, this may take some time to load the results, but um, as we are a bit Okay, great. So here I'm going to just uh, show this. 
Okay, and I'm going to turn this into a solid, so to give you the, the right color. Okay, so here what we are looking for, we are looking at um, this design, our UAV. Of course, here we are looking just at, at the half of the geometry. But if you want to show the whole model, what you can do, you can just make a cut, make, make symmetry of it. How to do this is by adding a filter. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to reflect this. Just a few seconds, and of course you're going to find the right direction. Of course, this will be the, um, on the X. Um, just one second, it will be the X min, I guess. Oh. oh, the X max, sorry, I apologize for this. All right, so here, uh, as you can see, now we have the full model. And you can see, use this, um, I mean, streamlines, but also other um, things to visualize. Of course, I'm going to jump back to the, the, the solid color to give you an idea. So here you can also see the flow um, behavior and the flow direction. And this will, of course, I'm not going deeper into the past processing, but this, this is how you can do it. You can see your model. You can um, evaluate the performance. For example, if you have some turbulence at some point um, in the geometry, you can change your CAD model and you can iterate in your design process and so on. But also, there is different approaches to do this past processing by using streamlines, by using um, slices. Other, there is different kind of past processing. So here we are looking at the, um, the pressure, but our the cross section of the of the domain, and you can see here the pressure, we can see that, uh, uh, sorry, we are looking at the, the velocity over here, um, and we can see here that we have this stagnation, uh, of course, I mean, it's better maybe to show the pressure so we can see some um, physics. No, I'm sorry. So I'm going to move to the slice, and in the slice I'm going to probably show you something else. Okay, so here we we are looking at the velocity, but because it's um, on the wall of the symmetry, so that's why we can't see anything. So what I can do, I can just uh, move it a little bit, um, minus 0 0.01 maybe, just an just, um, example. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, because it was in the um, the initial time, um, time uh, I mean, frame, so that's why. But guys, uh, I mean, as you can see, uh, this is the way how you can do it. And because we are running out of time, and also this may take some time to load the results and so on. So we need some time to um, analyze the results. So we're, what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to the presentation, to the slides, and talk about uh, some um, details regarding this present uh, about this simulation. But also, I'm going to share with you some stuff and some past processing. So let's wrap up um, what we did. So first of all, the mass generation. So um, we, we, we have talked about how to uh, create the mesh, how to open a project, how to par create parametric mesh, how to refine zones and layers. And also there is some advanced topics that you can um, discover of CAD cleanup, uh, preparation and manual meshing. Of course, there is, we do have a lot of webinars dedicated to different applications. I suggest for you guys, and I recommend this, um, to go to our um, uh, YouTube uh, channel where you can get access to all the recording of the webinars and you will get dedicated webinars for past processing for clean up of the models so we can't cover everything in one and a half hour or less um, then also we are talking about the the, the simulation setup so um, how to uh, generate a setup, how to um, do the mesh assignment, the material point to define the, the material um, that you're going to use, which is the air in this case, the initial condition, boundary condition, so start uh, the simulation. Um, other things that I have already given you an example about it is the numerical um, solver setting, where I suggest to keep it um, away if you're not really an expert in the field and if you don't really know what is it. 
and also the past process in how to create slides, how to create streamlines. Unfortunately, guys, we are running out of time. But um, I mean, as mentioned, if you are interested about these things, I will recommend you to go to our YouTube channel um, where you will find a lot of um, materials, a lot of videos, a lot of webinars recorded of how you can do all these steps in more details with a lot of um, explanation from experts. Okay, so now let's talk about the results. I, I showed you exact, approximately how you can do this past processing, but now let's jump to the results. So when we, when we do simulation, we are interested about two things. We are interested about values, and we are interested about the flow field. So we talk about values, and so I believe for you as aerodynamicist, you are interested about two major things. You are interested about the drag force, and you are interested about the lift force. And basically from these two values, you can extract the efficiency, which is the, uh, the ratio between the, um, the lift force and the drag force. And here we are doing tests of two different simulations for um, 3 degrees and for 20 degrees. And what I mean by this is changing the angle of attack without changing, the, um, of course, the velocity. All these things will be um, described in step-by-step -step tutorial uh, that you're going to get um, access to after this uh, presentation or this webinar. Um, so we did two different simulations and what we can understand and what we can analyze, what we can look at it from here. We can see for the, um, here in this table, we can see here AOA, which is the angle of attack with degrees, CD is drag coefficient, CL is lift coefficient, here we're getting the right real values. But let's analyze these forces or these drag coefficients. I like to use the coefficients because it's something that is um, not related to the velocity and um, I mean it's um, interesting to use this um, coefficients. So if we look at the drag coefficient for the three degrees we can look at it at its um, 0 0.23 236 but if we increase the, drag, the angle of attack to 20 degrees so it, it just imagine like the, your airplane is, um, I mean, in the takeoff, and when you increase the angle of attack to 20 degrees to, to the takeoff, we are increasing the drag by 160%. So this is really important thing that you keep in mind, that when you increase the, the angle of attack, you're increasing the, um, the drag force as well. But the most important thing is when you increase the angle of attack, you're increasing the lift force or the lift coefficient. And the increase, it's much higher. It's 195%. And that's why when you try to take off you, or you, you, you um, clamp in the, the, the air, it's usually you increase the angle of attack, so this will give you more lift. Okay, so here we can, interest, so here we can get an idea from where we are getting this increase. Of course, I mean, you will, um, without simulation and without looking at this colorful picture, it will be a little bit difficult to understand from where you, go, you are getting this um, lift force. So basically, this lift force is created from the pressure force and the difference of pressure. If we look at it, if we look at the, here at three degrees, we can see here with the blue um, spot on top of the wing. So this is the side view of a wing. This is an airfoil. We can see that we have this red, uh, green, sorry, a blue spot. And this blue spot, it's the low pressure region. And we look from the bottom, we do have a higher pressure. I mean, it's really high, not really high, but the difference of pressure it's high and this difference this will um, lift the wing upward so this will push this wing upward but when we increase the angle of attack what will happen we're gonna create a stagnation region and high a pressure from the bottom side of the wing but also we're gonna create more suction from the top and this will create higher delta P what I mean by delta P it's the pressure difference and this pressure difference will create a lift force that will lift our uh, our um, wing upward okay so here we are looking at uh, the pressure distribution, but not from the section side, but from the 3D um, or perspective view. What we look, we, we can see here, we can see at the three degrees that we have a decent section from the top of the wing. But when we increase the angle to 20 degrees, we can see clearly that the section is remarkable. It's uh, all over our wing, and this will create more lift because we are creating more delta P or pressure difference between the upper side and the bottom side of the wing. 
of course, with a wind tunnel, you can't see these things, but this is the most uh, beautiful thing about CFT, is that you will be able to analyze and to see exactly what's happened and the physics behind uh, these forces and these values. So simulation will give you um, deeper uh, insight, deep insight or insight into the physics and what is going around your um, product or your object. Here we are looking at the wall shear stress. The wall shear stress is the, of course, it's the the, the friction or let's call it the friction between the, the the wall or your surface and the the fluid. And in this case, we are looking at something really important because from the three degrees, we can see that we have high skin friction or wall shear stress all over our wing. But for the twenty degrees, what we can see, we can see that we have high um, skin. Uh, wall shear stress over the, the leading edge, but from the bottom or from the back or um, over the extrados, we don't have wall shear stress. And this explains one thing, is that we have a separation over there. So we don't have the flow that is attached to this wing, and that's why we have this separation. How to, do, to look at it? We can look at it from this uh, using a velocity distribution, and here we can see that we have this flow separation um, represented with the blue um, area over here in the back of the wing. Also, one um, interesting thing that you will face a lot when you are working with um, airplanes or any um, geometry that has wings, it's the, the vortices. And this is what we call the wingtip vortex. And this wingtip vortex, it um, have a direct influence on the drag and the lift because this will create an induced drag due to the, um, the downwash that will be created by this um, rotation of the flow. Of course, you have to uh, read about it a little bit because it's a really important concept. But that's why for modern aircraft, we see these winglets from the sides of this, the effect of these winglets is to reduce this downwash. And um, in consequence, this will reduce the, the induced drag. And in consequence, this will reduce the, um, of course, this will reduce the total drag of the airplane. Here we are looking at, at um, recirculation region that you can predict using simulation, which will be really difficult to predict other, um, to use other tools to see this, is the flow separation uh, and the wick of the, the geometry. And here in the back we can see this uh, blue region where we call it the, the wick um, region. Okay, guys, so um, this is the, um, all what we have today. I hope it was uh, helpful for you. And um, I can see a lot of questions. Um, thanks to my colleague, um, Anna. She, she, she was answering your questions. Of course, I can see other questions. I think we are a little bit um, out of time and uh, due to some occupation. So what we're going to do, we're going to, um, I mean, I promise you that I'm going to go back, get back to you guys by email. I'm going to answer your question for the people who didn't get any answer at the moment. Um, so, of course, I'm not going to, uh, it's, not, it's not the end, but as mentioned before, we're going to have um, a homework. And if you remember, but when we started this session, we have talked about the this homework. And what is the concept of the homework? Is to give you the possibility to, to test and to simulate by yourself. And of course you're gonna get the assistance and of course you're gonna get this step-by-step -step tutorial that you're gonna follow is just to give you an initial idea about how you can set up simulation and how you can run a simulation. Um, I believe that you're gonna have an online, set, uh, I mean, sorry, you're gonna have an email just after this online session um, with this link. And also, so your task in is to use SimScale platform to investigate the behavior of a drag and lift, as I explained before, and look at velocity and pressure distribution across the wing of different angle of attack, which will simulate will be simulated without changing the geometry. So we're going to get just one geometry, and in the tutorial step by step tutorial, you will you will um, get instructions of how you can do this at different angle of attack. We will um, work with an angle of 3 degrees and 20 degrees for plane traveling at uh, airplane traveling at 20 meters per second.
So basically what you're going to do, you're going to get um, the step-by-step -step tutorial, and this will show you how to set up a simulation for 3 degrees and 20 degrees with the same geometry, with the same mesh, and you're going to test it at 20 meter per second. Everything will be well explained in this step-by-step -step tutorial that you will get it soon. All right, guys, so um, we are coming at the end, to the end of this uh, presentation, I hope. You enjoyed it and you learned some new concepts about this um, about this really interesting topic aerodynamics thank you so much for your time um, y'all I really appreciate your time have a nice um, evening or have a nice afternoon wherever you are on the world um, I wish you good luck bye bye